Hello folks, welcome back. Technivorous here today. We are going to be giving you an introduction to Kira. So this is my first time opening Kira. This is what you'll see when you are opening Kira for the first time. I actually have used several versions of this and set it up a million times. So we're just going to jump right into it. I will show you the quick setup and some of the initial navigation and set you loose from there. So basic disclaimer, read it carefully, la di da. Um, just some basic stuff. I do encourage you to read through this. I have read through it already and I'm not going to take the time to do it in a video. So I do need to sign in. So we are going to go ahead and pause for just a second while I punch some stuff in. And if I can remember the password. There we go. So, uh, basically this is just logging me into my Ultimaker account and you can skip this step if you like. Um, since I have an account I did choose to log in, it will update in a second when I reload Kira. We are going to go ahead and it says add a networked printer. That means you have one plugged in via a USB cord. I don't. All of mine run on SD cards or over OctoPrint. So let's go to add a non-networked printer and we will do the basic, the Ender 3, that's the one everybody seems to want to do. So you basically just scroll down and find your manufacturer and then you find your model here. We're going to use the Pro and hit next. Uh, whatever printer you have, I mean they, they add a ton of definitions to this all the time. So it's going to have some start G code and NG code, we're going to leave that alone. We're going to leave all of the dimensions as they are because it's already pre-programmed. We're pretty much good to go with these settings right here. Just going to go ahead and hit the next button. Oh, one more thing I wanted to touch on while we're setting stuff up. If your printer ends up printing in the front left of the build plate and not in the middle, you need to go in and make sure that this is unchecked. Yeah, I know it says origin at center. Yes, you want it unchecked. It's talking about the origin of the model, not the origin of the build plate. So if you check that, it's going to print on the corner of your build plate, you're not going to get a proper print. You're going to have major issues. Some printers do need that checked. The Ender 3 and most Cartesian printers like it are not printers that need that checked. So we'll hit next here. And it's basically going to tell us what's new. And we're going to go over some of this, but it's saying line type is now the default color scheme. They're a better visual representation. This is specifically talking about the Z seam and there is other stuff so we'll talk about that stuff in another video when we cover the actual update this is because I'm, I'm using 4.9 here and this is a beta version that was just released but if you download the stable 4.8 version you're gonna get the same process you just won't get these uh, as your features for what's new and this is kind of an updated little menu here too as well um, before it would show you a list of the things that were new now you're getting a visual representation which is kinda nice as well all right, and here we have it. We have Kira all loaded up. This is the standard profile, the print settings that they recommend that you check out. There is a bunch more settings over here. If you'd like to know more about these settings, stay tuned because this is the first in a long playlist called Kira Settings in 5 Minutes or Less, where I'll go over basically each of these settings in 5 Minutes or Less and tell you how they work. So basically, you're going to go to File, and open file, you can grab an STL or an OBJ file or a 3MF file. So all of these different kinds, it'll let you grab and pull in here. Some of them will work, some of them won't. I tend to stick to STL, 3MF, OBJ, those are the three main ones. And in order to rotate, I am right clicking and dragging to spin this guy around. If you wanna zoom in and out, that is the mouse wheel and in order to get to the other perspective so if I want to change between uh, the front view or the top view that's these little guys down here so once you import a model you will get some other options here and I think that that's definitely worth checking out so let's drag something in and see what we get so here we have a rather large model. This is for a rotating platter that I made and it just barely doesn't fit on the build plate. Now there are a couple things we can do here to fix this and if I were to do that you can see when I select the model it gives me these model options over here. So let's make this small enough to fit on the print area. Right now there's an area that's grayed out around the edges and that's the part that we're kind of violating there. 
Um, you'll see why that's there when going through the settings for adhesion in one of our later videos, but for now we need to make this object fit inside the white space. So we can do a uniform scale, it's already set to do that automatically, and we can go ahead and we'll just take it down to 90%. When we hit enter, it'll change all of the dimensions to 90%. That keeps it in scale, even though we have altered the size of the object. One of the other things we're gonna wanna do is rotate it. Now, um, you're gonna wanna print with the flattest surface possible, and if I print with this pit piece on the build plate, I'm not gonna need much support other than then maybe a little bit for this hole here. So we're gonna rotate it that way, and clicking these arrows will rotate it by 90 degrees. Now I over-rotated it the wrong way, because there is a better way to do this. So if I click this button, this is select face to align to build plate, and then I click on that back face, it will automatically lay it down for me. Now you can see that it's ventured over a little to the side for me rotating it and it's not exactly centered. So if I right click it, I can center the model. And there's some other things that you can do in here by right clicking such as deleting the model and multiplying the model. You can select all models. If you have multiple models, you can click arrange models and that will put uh, several of them on the build plate as many as it can fit in the best uh, manner that it can fit them. So let's take this down to 10%. And since we just have one and it's tiny, let's go ahead and multiply. And if I put five copies, it's gonna make five copies, which will give me six in total. And I know six of them will fit on here, so that's not a problem. So let's go in, let's do select all models and we'll multiply the selected models again. Now it's gonna multiply this formation here. Let's do 10 this time, because I want too many and it's gonna take a minute while it does the calculation. Basically, it's fitting all of these in here. Now, if I take, and this is your transform, this is your move button here, so you can either, once it's selected, click and drag, or you can, say, use the arrows to drag it in and out. These two aren't on the build plate, it's not gonna print properly. Let's click on this and click Arrange All Models, and give it a minute to do its work. And as you can see, it reorganizes everything, gets everything fit back into the build plate. So just a couple quick handy tools. And that's going to be it for the navigation and simple use. If you want to see how to slice and what settings to use, definitely stay tuned for the next video. And like I said, I have a whole playlist of each of these settings going over in a quick manner, but basically explaining the gist of them, what they do, how to use them, and what they're good for. And that's going to be it for this video, guys. So make sure you stick around, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and ring the bell for notifications in the future. That way you can be updated when we post a new video to this playlist or any of our other 3D printing playlists as well. Thanks for stopping by, guys. Technivorous out. That's going to be it for this video. As always, I am Technivorous, and thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out our main channel page where we do a free giveaway for our subscribers every month. So far, we've given away things like a Capricorn PTFE tubing kit and spools of filament. So the giveaway videos are always pinned to our main channel page. So all you have to do is subscribe and leave a comment on the giveaway video for the current contest. Feel free to check out this video right here. YouTube picked it from my content just for you. And if you haven't already, you can hit the subscribe button right here. So what are you waiting for? Become a technivore now. Thanks again. Technivorous out.